Chug Chug Gragas has finally risen to power, and at dawn, we chug with this comp. With this build, we roll for 3 star units, and in this video, I will go over the build, what items you make, how to play before, during, and after level 5, what you do if you get contested, then I will go into some in-depth positioning examples. This is a slow roll comp, meaning that we roll down to 50 gold to maximize our odds of hitting 3 star units. The level we slow roll at is level 5. These are our 3 core units. We have Gragas as the primary tank, Cossacks as the early and mid game carry, and Pike for 2 assassin and some CC. Our level 5 board is this. We will be slow rolling with this board until we hit Gragas and Cossacks 3 star. We can replace both Nidalee and Soraka with other Dawnbringer units. The important thing is that we run 4 Dawnbringers and 2 Assassins. Once you hit your 3 stars, you will push to as far of a level ahead as possible. Most of the time, you will make it to level 8, and you want to end up with a board that looks something like this. You always want to end up with 6 Dawnbringers, and you will often have Karma, Nidalee, Riven, or Soraka as the secondary carry. Unless you 3 start any of them, Karma will be the secondary carry in most cases. If you did not 3 star Pike, he can also be replaced by either Diana or Viego here. Although this is called the Chug Jug Gragas comp, Cossacks is actually the primary carry for this comp, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Hodge. This is because he will heal to full if he gets an isolation kill on a target, and this lets him keep being a threat in the backline. The second item wants to be IE. This is to make sure his spell will always crit. And this also lets his auto attacks deal a decent amount of damage as well. The third item wants to be GA, RFC, or QSS. GA makes sure that if he gets CC'd and bursts it down, he will come back to life with max mana and cast the spell. And with Hodge as well, this can let him heal to full right out of the GA. RFC lets Cossack stay a little more safe, and it also gives him more attack speed. QSS makes sure that Cossack doesn't get CC'd, and lets him keep healing from Hodge with his ults and auto attacks. After we have itemized Kha'Zix, we want to itemize Gragas. His items are pretty flexible, and that's why it's not a priority. The best item for Gragas is Stoneplate. Since we will be solo fratlining Gragas, he will get a bunch of value from this item since many people are targeting him, and therefore he will get a ton of armor and MR. With his high HP and healing from Dawnbringer, we get a boatload of effective HP this way, and it's by far the best item on Gragas. The second item for Gragas wants to be Redemption or a Radiant item with percentage healing. This lets him get even more effective HP from the Stoneplate and lets him stay alive longer. These are the Radiant items that give percentage healing, and I will as always have a Radiant item tier list towards the end of the item part of the video. The third item for Gragas wants to be Sunfire, Bramble, Declaw, or Warmogs. It is a bit hard to get 3 good items for Kha'Zix and also 3 good items for Gragas, so some items that are okay on Gragas as the third item are Ionic Spark, Titan's Resolve, Frozen Heart, or ZZ Rot. If you make it to the endgame, you will usually itemize a secondary carry. Nidalee and Riven want 80 items and healing items, Karma and Soraka want AP items and either blue buff or Sojin. If you get a spatula, the best item to make is Dawnbringer Spat. This allows us to go for 8 Dawnbringers, or more easily fit in 6 Dawnbringers. Another option is Assassin Spat. This lets us go for 4 Assassins, or we can cut Pike for another unit. Here is the Radiant item tier list. The tank items here will go on Gragas, and the damage items will go on Kha'Zix. I want to note here that Radiant blue buff is actually pretty good on Kha'Zix, as he gets decent AP from it, and he also only needs 3 autos to cast again. Frozen Heart is also really good on both Pike or Diana. The carousel priority for this comp is Glove, Sword, Chain, the Belt. Since we're rolling for this comp at level 5 and we need very specific items, you want to pick up the units for the level 5 comp and then only play those. This is because we want to Lost Streak to get carousel priority and also to build up a large economy and get to 50 gold as fast as possible. Because of this, we never level at all in the early game, and the goal is to have more than 50 gold at stage 3-1 while still being level 4. In order to get this much gold, we often play for a 5 loss streak in the early game. Once we have our opener, we need to make items, and since we're playing for a loss streak most of the time, we can be greedy and not slam items. But the items you want to make early are any items for Kha'Zix or Gragas. Once you get to stage 3-1, you will roll down to 35 gold at level 4. The reason why it's 35 gold is because you only pay 3 gold to get the better odds at level 4 for 1 costs. After that, you will naturally level to 5 next turn. If you want to learn more about how to play stage 2, check out my early game guide, where I go in-depth on the subject. 
Once you get back up to 50 gold, we start slow rolling, meaning we roll down to 50 gold every single turn. This is to maximize our odds of hitting 3 star units. Our 3 star priority is Cossacks, Gragas, Pike, then Soraka, meaning that if you need to sell a unit for bench space, you will sell Soraka first, then Pike. But in some cases, if you're really close to Soraka but far off of Pike, you can sell off Pike as you're not going to 3 star him that game. I also want to note here that the only 3 star you need is Cossacks and Gragas. Soraka and Pike are just icing on the cake. If you're low in HP, once you get to 4 1, you might have to roll down until you hit Cossacks and Gragas 3 star. This is not preferred as you always want to slow roll, but you cannot tank stage 4 as you take a lot of damage here. Once you hit Cossacks and Gragas 3 star, you're done at level 5. If you're 1 or 2 off another 3 star unit, you just level up and hope to hit that later. In some cases, if you hit Cossacks or Gragas 3 star super early and you're far off the other, like in this gameplay, it can be okay to just push levels instead. If you hit Cossacks 3 star and not Gragas, you will use Garen as the main tank later. And if you hit Gragas but not Cossacks, you can sometimes use Karma as the carry. It just depends on what items you've already slammed. If you don't have items for Karma, you can store all at level 7 for Nidalee or Riven 3 star as they can use Cossacks items really well. Usually, you will hit both 3 star Gragas and 3 star Cossacks, but a huge part of the skill expression in reroll comps is to recognize when to give up on certain 3 stars, so be aware that there are different options in case you hit one of the two 3 star units and you're far off the other one. After you've hit your 3 star units, you push to as high of a level as possible. This is preferably level 9, but most of the time you won't have enough HP to go farther than level 7 or 8. There, you start adding in more Dawnbringers to get 6 of them. If you only get to level 7 before you had to roll, your board wants to look like this. And if you got to level 8, you replace either Soraka, Riven, or Nidalee with Garen. And the 8th unit you add in will be either Ivern for 2 Invokers and 2 Renewers, or it can be Draven or Kale for 2 Legionnaire. You can also replace Pike with either Diana or Viego if you did not 3-star Pike. The best emblems for this comp is Dawnbringer Emblem. This lets you go for 8 Dawnbringers, which is insanely good. Renewer can actually be okay on Gragas as well, as you get a ton of healing from it, or it can be great on Pike or Diana to get their cast off quicker. Invoker can be okay as you don't have to run Ivern if you're running Karma Carry. And Brawler Emblem is not great, but it's not terrible either as you get 2 Brawlers for Gragas. Getting contested on this comp is bad, but it's not the worst. Since there are 29 copies of each one cost, 2 people can hit both 3 star Gragas and Cossacks, although it will be significantly harder for both parties. You sure prefer it to be uncontested, but it's not impossible to play it contested. If you get contested, you have 2 different options. Option 1 is to play this comp and not go for 3 stars, then pivot into Karma and use Cossacks as an item carrier for her. Since Cossacks items are fairly unique, there aren't many other great pivots, but Forgotten Draven can also be an option. If you are doing this option, then you want to play as if you're going for Karma or Draven Carry. Option 2 is to contest and still go for 3 stars. This is definitely the riskiest option, and I would only do this if you meet these two requirements. The first one is to have great items for both Cossacks and Gragas from the beginning, and the second requirement is that you have an early Cossacks and Gragas 2 star. This way, we're far ahead, and we're still in a good spot to save HP during Stage 2 and Stage 3. First, let me explain how Cossack's abilities work. It deals 3 times as much damage if the unit has no adjacent allies. This is why we always want Cossack's to isolate his targets to deal more damage. General positioning with this comp looks like this. Here we have Soraka in the corner to keep Karma safe from the farthest OACC. Karma and Nidalee are both in the backline to stay safe. Gragas is center on the second row. This is because we want him to get most of the aggro and also to pull out the enemy carries so that they get stunned by Pike. Garen and Ivern are on the far edges of the third row. This is to make Gragas take the most amount of aggro, but also to try to split up the enemies. By splitting up the enemies, we'll let Cossacks have more isolated targets that he can deal bonus damage to, and therefore more effectively clear out the enemy team. Now moving on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Draven and Viego. Cossacks is positioned to jump on the Draven, Pike is positioned to pull the Jax to him and therefore let Thresh and Draven be isolated. Gragas and Garen are pulling the frontline down away from Cossacks and also making Draven walk, which lets him also be isolated. 
Karma is positioned away from Viego to not get stolen. Against the second guy, the big threat is Yasuo. Soraka is being Diana Bates, Karma and Nidalee are staying safe on the right side. Since there are no units to draw out, we are positioning both Gragas and Garen in the frontline. Here, we're splitting up Sejuani and Jax from the rest of the pack. It is very hard to get isolation value here since all of the units are melee. Even though Yasuo has RFC, he will still be hugging behind enemy units. Kha'Zix is jumping the Yasuo. Pike is positioned to stun through Yasuo to Diana. Against the third guy, the big threat is Lucian. Kha'Zix is jumping Senna on the right side in order to not get stunned by her ultimate. Pike is jumping to pull the Rakan away from Lucian so that Kha'Zix can get isolation value from him. Gragas is pulling the backline forward. Soraka is being Senna and Lucian bait. Karma and Nidalee are once again staying safe. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 3,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.